Good morning and welcome to the worship for May 10th at Fort Hill United Methodist Church. We are blessed by your presence this day. And as you follow up, follow with us in worship today, you will find the order of worship on the Facebook, on the church website, or by other means by which you are observing the service today. Today as we worship, we do so in observance of the Festival of the Christian Home and Mother's Day. We wish you a blessed Mother's Day this day. And today we thank Peyton Haywood, who will be joining us in helping to uh, sing. I invite you now to join in the call to worship that you'll find printed. How lovely is your dwelling place, O O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Invite us to join together in our prayer. May we pray. In you, O God, every family on earth receives its name. Illumine the homes of this earth with the light of your love, granting courage to those who are hurt or lonely, endurance to those who care for sick family members, and wisdom to those in fearful times of change. We thank you for gifts of love as we have received from mother, father, spouse, child, or companion. As we have been loved by you and by others, so may we love. Grant us your peace through Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Today's scripture is Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. On this day, when we observe the festival of the Christian home and honor our mothers and all women who bless their families with God's love, I invite us to take Jesus' advice and to look at the birds. I was blessed to be raised in a Christian home. My mother, Vivian, and my father, Morton, were persons of faith in Jesus who strove for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. One of the ways I observed them striving for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness was by watching how they looked at the birds. My mother was a bird watcher. She loved to see birds interact with each other. She would put out bird seed on the front lawn and then stand at the kitchen window overlooking the front lawn and watch the birds as they interacted with each other. This was especially true in the wintertime when snow would be covering the ground and my mother would want to care for the birds in this way. I think one of the reasons my mother enjoyed watching the birds and caring for them was because she believed in Jesus' advice in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, to look at the birds of the air. They ne neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I believe when my mother looked at the birds, she was realizing that the God who valued the birds valued her as well. My father also looked at birds, not in the front lawn, but rather in his paint garage. My father and my maternal grandfather were in business together painting houses, Brooks and Brown painting contractors. My father had a paint garage that was uh, above where the house was where I grew up. And if, at times, if my father would leave the garage door open, birds would fly in to the garage. Some of the birds, as they flew into the garage, were able to fly back out through the open door, but other birds would become trapped in the garage. And the reason for this was that at one end of the garage, on the eastern side of the garage, my father had, a, the wall was a, not a solid wall, but it was made up of panes of window glass from top to bottom. He did this for solar heating and also to enjoy the view of the of the uh, trees and the hills that were on that side of the garage. Well, when birds would fly in and they didn't fly back out through the garage door, they would flap themselves against this pane of windows in the illusion of freedom and their desperation for freedom. When this would happen, my father or I would go up into the garage as we would inspect on a, on a somewhat regular basis to see if there were birds up against the windows. 
what would happen then would be that I ha we had a rag that we would take and we would go to where the bird was beating up against the window and we would pick up the bird in our hands with the rag, take it over to the garage door and stand there and the bird would fly to freedom. Now, some birds were more cooperative than others. Some of the birds would allow us to help them, but other birds in their fright would beat against the window even harder. And the only thing that we could do then was to stand to look at the bird and to wait until it reached a point where it would allow us to pick it up and take it to the door, to the open door. When this would happen, and as I would stand there looking at the bird, sometimes the bird would look back at me, looking and wondering what I was about to do. Eventually, the bird would gather its strength and then fly to the freedom it sought. Jesus advised us to look at the birds as we strove for the kingdom of heaven and sought God's righteousness. The scripture we hear today from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is part of a larger section of scripture from Matthew chapter 5 through Matthew chapter 7 called the Sermon on the Mount. It was a sermon that Jesus preached in the beginning as he listed the vision of God's kingdom of righteousness and the value of our seeking for it. As you read through the Sermon on the Mount, you'll see that Jesus talks about values that we are to live by in our lives that allow us to know God's love for us that allow us to participate in God's love for others. Values such as the Beatitudes that are found in the first 12 verses of the fifth chapter of Matthew. Some of the Beatitudes are these, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. Jesus advises us to live with the values of God's kingdom in our lives, values such as looking at the birds and realizing how much God loves the birds and how much God loves us. Dennis Waitley, in his book, Seeds of Greatness, emphasized the importance of being valued and loved in life. He writes in his first chapter these words, People who live with fear grow up standing at the end of every line. People who live with praise learn to stand alone and lead the parade even if it's raining. People who are spoiled with indulgence and permissiveness grow up to be full of compromising greed. People who are given challenges and responsibilities grow up with values and goals. People who live with optimism will grow up thinking they can fly. Look at the birds. Are you not of much more value than them? Today is the festival of the Christian home and Mother's Day. It is the day we consider what it means for us to be valued and loved as we strive for God's kingdom and God's righteousness in our lives. It is a day we consider what it means to look at the birds as we live in love for each other. Jamie Potter Miller tells of the time when her son and her daughter were preschoolers. One afternoon, her son Jordan came crying to her, holding out his pudgy arm. He was 11 months old, and he had six teeth, four on the top, two on the bottom. And he held out his arm to her, and she saw on his arm teeth marks 
not, six, not four on the top and two on the bottom, but a full set of teeth that belonged to his sister, Jamie, who was three years old. Actually, not Jamie, but Jana was the daughter's name. I want to be sure I get that right. So as Jamie was with her son, Jordan, she sought out her daughter, Jana. And she told Jana how wrong it was to bite her brother. And Jamie had a practice that when she was talking to her children and wanted them to listen carefully, she would put her, their hands, her hands, and have their cheeks. And she would say, listen, now watch my mouth. This is important. And so with her daughter's hand, face in her hands, she told her, now listen, this is important. You can't bite your brother. And then, for punishment, all Sesame Street privileges were suspended for the day. Well, later that evening, as Jamie was helping Janet to get ready for bed and was giving her her bath, she noticed that on Jana's bottom, there were a set of teeth marks, four on the top, two on the bottom. Jana, honey, where did you get that bruise? Jana answered, looked up at her mother and said, that's where Jordan bit me before I bit him. Honey, why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me, Mommy. Jamie told her daughter that she was wrong not to ask and that Jana could punish her if she wanted. To which Jana replied by taking her mother's face in her chubby, wet hands and said, watch my mouth. This is important. It's okay. On this day of the festival of the Christian home and Mother's Day, we consider and remember what it means to live in a holy love that shares God's love that shares the value of God in our lives and shares the value of others in our lives. We remember Jesus' command to look at the birds and to remember that God gives us the strength to fly as we strive for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. Today, on this festival of the Christian home and Mother's Day, I invite us to look at the birds in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.
As we join in time of prayer this day, I will be offering a prayer petition. Following each petition, I will say, we pray to the Lord, and then our response together will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this day. As always, if there are ways that our church might be of ministry, uh, with help with food, picking up prescriptions, other um, ways in which we might be of service or ministry to you, please call 
My cell phone is 804-221-9051. You may send uh, an email to Mark Brown, M-A-R-C Brown, at forthillumc.com. Look at the birds. And remember that God values you above all else. May God bless you on the festival of the Christian home and on this Mother's Day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.